Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Today at 5.45, thereabouts, uh, there is going to be a town hall meeting where Congressman Ro Khanna will be meeting with his constituents. I mean, this is a regular occurrence. Uh, Congressman Khanna always comes here, listens to his constituents, listens to their concerns, and then tries to see what best he can. This has been a custom for a few years now. Today's so, uh, today's uh, town hall meeting gathers special significance because there are many people who are going to be rallying outside the town hall because people are not very happy about the stony silence that Congressman Khanna has been keeping regarding the SB 403 California uh, caste discrimination case that uh, State Senator Aisha Wahab is trying to bring. And, and this one has really touched a raw nerve amongst many people who believe, and, and this is the truth, that everybody comes to America seeking meritocracy. The, the, the way the system is set up, that it uh, rewards meritocracy. This has been the crux of the reason why America has become so successful in the world, because it is a land of immigrants. So I've, I, I've told you why people come here. Now, why are, uh, if you are wondering why I'm having the Golden Gate in the backdrop, it is because the, you can see the same kind of an art structure in the logo of Cisco Systems. In fact, some people say the Cisco of Cisco Systems comes from the fact that it is part of San Francisco. Anyway, this is uh, history from a long way back. Today, I just wanted to try and understand why it is that Equality Labs is trying to brazen it out by saying, I, I'm just reading the title of their uh, uh, press statement, Cisco still faces caste bias suit as caste equity movement continues its fight to end caste across all workplaces. I um, then went back yesterday and I was thinking, what is this? How is it that this is not uh, done? Why I say this is done and dusted is because this was never a case. There never was a case. And how I came to that conclusion was going by going through castgate.org. Now, I've been telling you this to you know read this for many days now. I don't know how many of you have had time to read it. So I thought, okay, I'll go and take a look at the case, study it in some detail. And then I, I saw some, you know, um, striking points that told me, oh my goodness, that never was a case. Somehow, CRD, that is, this is today's name, California right, uh, uh, Rights De Department or something of that nature. It used to be a different name before that, CFEH or something like that. Why they changed the name, we don't know. What we do know is once this case started, the main lawyer of CRD got fired by the governor of California, Gavin Newsom. And, and there, there are so many egregious errors that have been made. I thought I'll just document this really quickly for you. This is important for those of you who are planning to attend the rally today. You need to understand and arm yourself with the facts of the case thus far. And that's why I'm going to put those things out to you now. So here we go. So there are five reasons that I looked at by just going through the timeline. There are 87 uh, bullet points there. And almost all of them have extra reference. That means you, if you want more data on that, you can click on the link and you'll get more data. Completely factual, completely based on records that are available for public scrutiny. The only thing is, like everything else, you know, things were scattered all over the place. So castday.org has actually put together everything in a cogent place, a place where you can go and look at the timeline see what happened and and then i leave it to you to decide what really happened here and how is it that despite knowing that there was no case that crd tried to brazen it out so here we go next slide please so um the court record show there were at least 30 plus corrupt actions on part of the department. There were four unique constitutional violations. Now I'll just touch upon one because I mean, you can keep on saying one, two, three, four. The, the point here is to give you mota mota what exactly happened, how this is been, you know, documented to great detail and yet CRD tried to brazen it out. I don't know what it is that these people have. I have some guesses. I'll do that thing at the end of this presentation. So the court records show 30 plus corrupt actions, four unique constitutional violations, five plus deliberate fabrications, five plus intentional tampering of dates, nine plus smearing of Indian Americans. This is what gets my goat. 
and one shocking claim of a salary discrimination against the CEO who gave away millions. I touched upon this in my talk with Nikunj yesterday about once the um, the, the the withdrawal of the case by CRD came through yesterday. We had a ch chat with uh, I and uh, Nikun Trivedi of Kona had a discussion and I touched upon this. How the CEO actually gave away all his money to all the employees. I mean, this is all documented. I'm going to walk you through this thing and, and see how this thing played out. So on in January 2023, seeing the case not going through fast enough, the defendants, that is uh, um, the uh, Cisco employees, they uh, filed a motion to sanction the CRD, and it did that. It did happen. Next slide, please. So, um, like I said, there are 87 or 88, something like that, line items. I just picked five main ones because all I want all of our viewers to do is. Please spend some time, go through it, read it, because they, see, you think that, oh, the facts state otherwise, and therefore, um, you know, I'm going to win a case. No, no. There are people now who are deliberate and they want to try and hide inconvenient facts. They want to not tell you the truth. And somehow that means they are basically saying, this is the place I want to go. This is the verdict I want. And I'll walk backward from there. That's exactly what it looks like when I read this thing. So on John 11, John Doe, John Doe, by the way, viewers, is something that is the name of a complainant. They usually hide this thing. This is just like how in India, a rape victim usually doesn't state her name. Uh, it could be his name also. Um, they don't state the name. So same, some so the John Doe is like a, uh, the person who was actually complaining of caste discrimination. So he... <laughs> The thing was, the whole case was filed saying that he was not awarded a few thousand dollars of salary increment in October 2016, despite Mr. Iyer, who was a CEO, having given his entire CEO equity, which amounted to millions of dollars. Okay, so th this was a startup within Cisco. See, Cisco has a very interesting policy. I have never seen any other company in the Silicon Valley that has the capacity to absorb new startups that it acquires and put the products into the mainstream as good as Cisco. They, they had a process in place. They will acquire. And there was a time when they were acquiring one or two companies every quarter. That's how they grew, grew so dramatically during the 90s and early 2000s. And they, so there was an internal startup of which Mr. Sundar Iyer was the CEO. And, and here the documents say, I mean, you can go to this 11 and then you can go and claim, uh, you can go and click on the links there to find out more data about what is mentioned here. So the, the complainant actually was making millions of dollars, millions of dollars. And yet the person felt that he didn't get an increment of a few thousand dollars and therefore, he felt that he was being discriminated. Why this is utter nonsense will be obvious to you when you look at the slides coming later. Now, the other person that was sued, his name is Ramana Kompella. What happens is that Ramana Kompella reports to his boss, whose name is Tom Edzal. Tom Edzal is, I'm just making it clear so that because we are talking about caste discrimination, I have to say this thing. Tom Edzal is a white and, and he is the boss of Ramana Kompella. And John Doe works for Ramana Kompella. Now, what Ramana Kompella was asked to do, and by the way, any startup, you are asked to give weekly timesheets, especially in these days where, you know, people are working from home, people are working from, you know, uh, far out places. They are, they'll be working, uh, living in the East Coast and working on a West Coast company. Communication is very important. What you did, where you are stuck, what are you waiting for? From whom? All these things come out when you do a uh, weekly status report. And, and this has been used as a reason to complain against Ramana Kompella. Why? Because this John Doe has identified Ramana Kompella or maybe, you know, whoever else is, you know, running the thing in the back engine said that, oh, this guy is also Brahmin. Go after him. Sue him. This is exactly how this thing was all planned. That's how it looks to me. Okay. This is because there, this is the utterest nonsense I've seen. How can you say that somebody asking me a weekly status report constitutes that this guy is discriminating against me? God damn it. This is a startup. In startup, only one in 10 succeeds. Everybody is laser focused on doing their job. 
And another thing, by the way, the reason why some startups succeed and others fail is because in the successful startup, every person pulls like the weight of three full-time employees. One guy will do three people's job. And even if it is 90, 90% of the three people's job, that is enough to get you over that point where people say, okay, this is the legit product. I want to buy it because these people are small. They can't grow fast enough. I can put rocket infusion of cash and this can really take off. This is exactly how VCs think. When somebody gets a series A funding, that's what happens. Idea is good, like they don't they need money to execute. That's why we are going to give in, go in and give money. So everybody is working towards that goal. So to say that oh, this guy asked me for a weekly status report, and Ramana was just complying with his boss. And, and in an organization, everybody is going to find out what the heck you are doing. You are getting paid big bucks. It's completely justified to do that. To use this as a cause. You know, it beggars belief that CRD doesn't even understand this. What are these guys? They have never done any work in private sector or what? Weekly status reports are like, you know, bread and butter for any company's functioning. Anyway, next slide, please. Now, at that time, this uh, department of California used to be called DFEH. So DFEH, CRD, the same thing. They just morphed their name. Clearly, DFEH had some bad baggage, which is why I think even the government department says, let's not have that name. Now let's have the new name. We call it CRD. Okay, so <laughs> this is this is really interesting. The, 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 the lawsuit says that all three head positions were first offered to another meritorious Dalit. And, and you see the obviousness here. The, the, the question was never that Dalit was being overlooked. The question was a certain John Doe did not get a certain position. And, and just to prove it, there were three heads of engineering. Like, for example, you will have in a startup, right? You'll have uh, your next level, vice president level. You'll have a head of engineering, head of product design, head of marketing. You can have many more. It depends upon what kind of a product it is being uh, designed. So these jobs were given and, and one of those jobs was picked up by a meritorious Dalit. See, it is, it is never what you are. Nobody asks anybody, what is your background? Where are you? At most, you can talk about which state you are from just to understand the differences in culture or maybe when people are meeting together for lunch or something like that. Beyond that, nobody ever asks about your caste background or any other thing. Time kaha hai aapke logon ko? Whenever you are in a startup, you are in a 30 minute, you know, compressed lunch mode. Go quickly, eat something, get back because you're still, even while you are eating, the problem is running at the back of your mind. That is, I'm telling you, startup environments are where three jobs are being done by one individual. Person has not much time. You put your blinkers on, you say, okay, this is what I need to get accomplished by the end of the day. And I work towards that. So this kind of, a, they, they, they try to hide the fact that one of these promotions to, was to another Dalit because that would dilute their case. Then afterwards in October, they ratified, they, they refiled the case in state court. So first they, they put one. And I, in fact, I don't know if you have, seen my pgurus.com article, I have specifically written a detailed article about the first time when they filed a case, how that, they, I had no idea. These are all things that are coming out only in the last few days. I had no idea about this. And I had said that this is the wrong case that uh, the California department should be fighting. And, and how did they all know what is right and what is wrong? I, I mean, anyway, so I just wanted to highlight that even then I knew that this was full of holes. And now it is becoming abundantly clear that there is really no case at all. Next slide, please. I'm not reading the entire uh, text there. I would, uh, you know, you guys can read it so you know what exactly is going on. But they, <laughs> the BFEH, in their complaint, defined caste as a strict. Hindu, social, and religious hierarchy. I mean, you take any word you can you get from the dictionary, throw it in and say, okay, this is what is a caste. Basically, what they wanted was the outcome. They wanted to somehow nail one company of caste discrimination, and they were working towards that outcome. Facts be damned. That's how it looks to me. Okay. So, they assigned Mr. Iyer a Hindu caste, and this is malicious as the DFEH knew 
since 2018 as these uncontradicted facts were provided to the plant plaintiff during the investigation of those administrative complaint see you, you you can say oh okay okay now uh, mr ayer says that he is not really a practicing you know they they were trying to nail him as a brahmin that he says oh no 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 he is he doesn't believe in god he thinks he is an atheist and he has a fundamental right to uh, religion his religious beliefs well turns out that in his linkedin profile created years ago he has mentioned all these things you see what i'm saying they they didn't even do due diligence to find out the people that we are going after what are their bases so this shows that crd or whatever dfeh they had really no idea and this is what's going to happen guys even if you know seattle comes out with this resolution right implementation is near impossible and it is just a um, a mess it's a waste of time for the hr you will just you know they they will get completely exasperated maybe that's what they want they want to know oh okay this is a hindu name wait a minute oh gosh now i have to do all this due diligence on caste discrimination is there a better candidate is that what these people want the unfortunate thing is ten mori sandrajan is of indian descent kshama savant indian descent ajanta subramaniam of harvard Indian descent. Uh, Sunita, oh, I don't remember his last name. Uh, she's in Hindu for Human Rights, another uh, group that is being funded by the Alphabet Soup organization, Indian descent. Ila Kanchaya, Indian descent. You are, you know, how sad this is that we are being weaponized against ourselves. Shame on us. Shame on us. Do you think that people like Ajanta Subramaniam, who's a Brahmin born person, wouldn't know? Shama Savant is also a Brahmin. What the heck did you learn in your uh, childhood? And what did your parents teach you? It, it's just, I can tell you, I'm, I'm, you know, I've lived more than half of my life in the United States. But the values you learn from Bharat Mata, they never go away. These are value systems. What is right? What is wrong? What is dharma? What is adharma? These things never go away. And it is shame that we allow ourselves to be, you know, used as sepoys to fight what is really an adharmic cause? Uh, this is my two cents. Anyway, so the department knew that Mr. Iyer had no religious beliefs. And the proof was supplied as part of the LinkedIn profile. And yet, they just still want to brazen it out. Next slide, please. Uh, actually, sorry, go back to the previous slide. Okay, so this is the takeaway there. An American citizen's right to freedom of religion is guaranteed under the First Amendment. This is why I said, remember the 30 plus things, violation of right to freedom of religion. If somebody says, this is what I'm practicing, you take them at their face value. Why would somebody want to lie about what their religion is? Although you could be a certain person who wants to be under a particular... Uh, Indian uh, caste category, but you are practicing something else. Oh, don't, don't talk about that. Let's only talk about this. You know who I'm talking about. Loud mouths. Anyway, next uh, slide, please. So, the defendants allege an improper purpose to harass or to cause unnecessary delay or expense by the CRD. They present several uncontradicted facts. Motion for sanctions. You know, if you go, if, again, you go and look at uh, line item 81, there'll be a link there. You can go and look at all the different things. And imagine if this case was to have taken place in India, they would still be like, you know, asking for submissions. At least in this case, three years, the ordeal is over. Now they have filed for a withdrawal with, um, there is a word that I'm I'm searching for. The, uh, I, it'll come to me. So basically what that means is that the CRD can never file this case again. They are done. This is this is it. And, and, and some people are trying to misinterpret that and say, no, 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 this is not it. This is not it. No, this is done. You cannot take this case anymore. And, and they are intentionally saying we messed up. And I told you, right, the, the lead lawyer got fired by the governor of Gavin. So there is something rotten in the department completely. The CRD is completely rotten. It's corrupt. It appears to be brazen. It appears to be suffering from hubris. From just looking at this data, I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not, uh, uh, you know, casting aspersions on the entire group. But if this is the sample, and if this is how they try to litigate their cases, God save California. Where are we going? 
Meritocracy was the hallmark of California. People came to Silicon Valley because they could share new ideas, they could dream new ideas, they could implement those new ideas. This is what Silicon Valley was always about. And they want to ruin that. Next one, please. Okay, so that, that brings us to an end of all this uh, the slide presentation I had. I've already taken, what, uh, 20 minutes. This is a little long for a monologue. And at this point of time, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to put those things up here. I can try and answer to the best of my ability. But it is a must for you to read the cascade.org documentation. I'll give you the links. Go, go ahead and take a look at that, and you'll understand where I'm coming from. Satya Narayanan wants to know, very intricate and comprehensive analysis. Nobody has gone into this so exhaustively as far as I have read on the matter. Kudos to you, Sri. Do you think this episode would have an impact on hiring of Indian empiricals on a, of a complaining nature in future? Satya, America is a very open-minded society. I told you, right, this country was built on immigrants. And, and anywhere they saw merit, they immediately recognized it. In fact, Silicon Valley is a real melting pot. You know, you will see so many different accents of English being spoken. In some meetings, you know, you have to really carefully listen to what a particular person is saying. Yet that particular person will be having a very important role to play because the sheer brilliance of that person, his work shows how brilliant he is. So what if he has some struggle with a particular word or the other? People understand. They can, they can, you know, sometimes the manager will, you know, say, okay, did you mean this or did you mean this or go and write on the board? Because once you start writing a flowchart, that's the language that everybody understands. My point here is this is a world's best melting point of civilizations. This is place where new ideas get hatched. Look at how many successful companies have come out of the Silicon Valley. And I'm not talking about just high-tech companies. The many medical companies, Gilead Sciences, one of the most successful uh, medical, med pharma companies. So th this is a place where everything you know, is recognized, your merit is recognized, your ability, your vision, your passion is recognized. Fantastic schools like Stanford, um, UC Berkeley, and Santa Clara, and all these things are being taken aim at by a few lumpens who want to somehow stretch the truth. That's how I see it. Next, please. So the answer to your question is no. I don't believe so. Because merit has its own way of shining. The, the interviews are not easy. Uh, and, and by the time the interview rounds are done, people know who you are, what you stand for, and how brilliant you are. So I'm hoping that that answers your question. Next for Michael Myers. Heard that up to $90, $950 of grocery theft is allowed in California. And that's the reason why Walmart closing the source in California. Is this right, sir? Michael, it's not all over California. It's the city of San Francisco that kind of said that anything below 950, we don't even want you to report to us. So what ended up happening was there are some difficult neighborhoods in San Francisco where the Walmart had a presence, some other companies had a presence, and they have closed those stores. See, the thing is, it hurts the very people it is supposed to help. Because what happens is the underserved sections of the society don't even have like you know basic transportation. So, so by being close to them, they can walk to the store, buy their groceries. But when you have some things like this, where somebody just hits the store and then walks away with goods, I, I, there, there are many videos that tell you what was happening. But this is really the wrong direction in which the uh, state is headed. And, and Mr. Gavin Newsom has presidential ambitions. Good luck to him. Uh, I mean, I don't, I, I certainly, he doesn't have my vote. I remember I told you I'm an independent and I vote based on the candidate and this person has to prove that he really has good intent at heart. He did an okay, okay job during the COVID time, but beyond that, uh, no. Next. Karthik Vishwanathan wants to know, why are we seeing so much of vitriol here and in US? Modi bashing is going beyond con control now. Every day I see Rana Ayub, fraud, Zubair, peddling lies. So, Karthik, you notice what happened in the case of Kajal Hindustani, right? Did you watch that video that I had uh, in conversation with um, Jagdi Shetty yesterday? Uh, yesterday for me, but morning for you guys. Um, what did she say wrong? I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping that people have commented saying that, yes, this was what she said and that was wrong. Because 10 times that amount of vitriol gets spewed out in many masjids across India every Friday. And, and I'm hearing similar stories in churches also. Certain 
denominations. Not I won't blame all of them. Some denominations are so radically messed up right from their childhood that God save India if it thinks if things go along the same way. So what was needed? This is the one big beef I have against the Modi government. What was needed was law implemented equally across the uh, the spectrum. Why did they not bring uniform code? civil court in uh, when they came back to power in 2019 see what happens is you have a honeymoon period when you come back three months or so in that you want to just go one two three four five let big all bring all the big bang reforms in initially and then work towards implementing them don't give time what they did instead was they you know they they, they should have gone to what the other things that they had promised but mr modi has a double take Three days after Amit Shah announces in the parliament that NRC is going to be ap applicable to the entire country, he goes out and says, no, 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 it's not going to be there. What the heck is wrong with them? Why can't they speak with the same voice? Anyway, this is my beef against the government, Modi government. I also don't like the way they handled the Shaheen Bagh incident, the Delhi riots, everything else that happened after that. You know, you, you want to have, you have dreams of becoming a $5 trillion economy. You think people are just going to come line up and give you money? See, Despite all these things, if India is attracting foreign investment, it is because there is no other place that is even remotely as capable of India um, today. But things can change. Don't take, uh, you know, don't take things for granted. I still feel that this government needs to be very even handed in its implementation of law and order. So what if law and order is a state subject? Can't you direct them? There are constitutional uh, laws that tell you how the central government can tell this is what the facts are on the ground. You better act. The DMKs and uh, the BSRs will act. Why would they not act? There is precedence of uh, government being dismissed for not doing what they are supposed to be doing. Anyway, that's my two cents. You have to act decisively. You can be strict, but you have to be fair. Don't worry about what the uh, foreign countries are saying. Do you, do you see what is going on in, uh, in uh, Senate? And in various state legislatures in the United States, each each party is trying to make sure that the other party guys doesn't even enter the legislative buildings, including what, what played out with Donald Trump. What is it that Ms. Pelosi has so much against Donald Trump that she wants to impeach him twice? I mean, yeah, what a waste of taxpayer money. That's what I keep coming back to. It is my taxpayer money that pays all these salaries. And I feel bad when instead of doing something good for the country, the God knows there are lots of problems. And, and they just want to indulge in, in all these cheap political gimmicks. I want to make sure that you never become president again. And that person says, I want to make sure that you never enter the country again. What sort of nonsense is this? Are we children? That's my beef. Next question, please. Mr. Lee, how much was the raise in dollars that John Doe wanted as a proportion to his net salary? Mr. Lee, <laughs> you will laugh when I tell you the numbers. I, I remember somewhere, I don't know if it is mentioned there. This is all conversations, okay? Typically, what happens is, uh, how much do you think you can get as a raise? Let us say you are making $200,000. $200,000 is minimum. They might have been making more. You know, 5% raise, 200,000, 5% is what? $10,000? Something, you know, what I'm trying to say is typically if the, uh, the company does well, you have bonuses. You have bonuses at the end of the year. You also get more incentive stock options where you get to exercise your stock option. And that will be like a four-year resting period, 25% now, next year, 25, another year, 25. So the, every, the, these are like you get these options once in a while and, and you can exercise that and make money off of it. So I don't think that the amount was the question here they just wanted an excuse somehow somehow they knew that sundar Ayer was a brahmin they knew that ramana kompella was a brahmin by the way i didn't know that the name kompella means a brahmin. i have no idea guys it's, you see the thing is this is the problem we all don't know we don't know what is our caste when we come to united states we are so focused on putting down roots bringing up our children, making sure they get good education, making sure that they have a good future. So they don't have to go through the life that we went through. This is all people think about. In fact, this is the reason why the Hindu American community is so successful. And that has now attracted, the, why is this, this fellow so successful? They forget how hard the first generation immigrants work. It's true for all immigrants. It just so happens 
that the the indian american community has been extremely successful that is because of the 1990s and 2000s when there was an exodus of the bright, brilliant minds because they couldn't find any opportunities in india that was the that is really the truth okay so sometimes you'll have that but nowadays it's not so people stay in india and they take up startup jobs they are doing extremely well in india itself uh, mohan thank you mohan it seems somewhere in the east wants to be only superpower and some with jay chance is destabilizing us and hitting them where it hurts most including and not limited to silicon valley you are absolutely right mohan but all the evil ideas seem to always gen uh, germinate from here equality labs i think is a california corporation you you never know with these people okay one day their website will say one thing then they'll see that oh there is some inconvenient truth in this statement they'll go and rub it off sanitize it next day that data will be gone like for example uh, the association of uh, tenmuri sounder rajan with uh, humadar and dars uh, daughter natasha da they try to say oh no 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 because why humadar is an inconvenient fact her father was a uh, uh, officer in pakistan army that fellow i believe has also served in bangladesh during the genocide the hindu genocide so this see this and and for you know city after city you know university after university what are you harvard aren't you brilliant legal uh, intellectuals aren't you the creme de la creme of the society what about you stanford and what about you uh, california state and you uh, uc davis is a california system that is not in a state they also have done this thing i mean you have to do some basic groundwork everybody now has egg on their faces what if you know people gang together and go after all of you for discriminating how many children of uh, indian american origin lost out their college admissions this year this this fall i'm hearing horror stories so th this is already done a lot of damage the best thing it can be done is eat humble pie get out of all these things and and i expect some serious explaining from uh, uh aisha wahab as to why sb403 is going to be withdrawn if she doesn't do it i'm afraid her political career is over this is not going to stop here that's what i think because the facts are now completely available for everyone to see next one Vamshi, I'm in so uh, Bay Area. How can I contribute to your work? Uh, Vamshi, you can uh, uh, contact at pgurus.com. Please reach out to me. I have a lot of projects where I need to take it to the uh, next uh, uh, phase so that I can present you. All these, uh, you know, slide decks, I have a team doing it for me. But sometimes we are overwhelmed with data. So we have to make sure that there is data. But the data needs to be presented in a way that you all can understand. Because I understand you are giving us the gift of your valuable time. There are so many things to do. And, and that by listening to this program and asking these questions, I know you are investing in it because you are curious. You believe that we provide you value. So in that respect, I do need some help. So please reach out to me at contact at pgurus.com. And I'll be happy to see how best I can make use of your talent and time. Thank you. Next. Karthik, again, anything you want in terms of support, please do let your listeners know. I would love to support this cause. See, very simple, Karthik. Pay, pay, PayPal.com, we take donations. Okay. And, and every time we pro start any program, you can see the thing. Uh, it's paypal.me slash pgurus. If you type paypal.me slash pgurus, can you put up that string? There you go. That's, that, that's one way you can donate to us. The other one is, of course, you can do super thanks. And I think when the program is live, it's called super chat. You can donate that way. And more importantly, there are lots of books that we are putting out. If you happen to be in India, you can order the books and then you can come bring it back. Give books as gifts to your children, to your friends. It, it used to be the work when I was growing up because there was no TV then. I mean, there was one Doordarshan channel uh, that started, I think, in the late 60s. or I don't even remember when Doordarshan started in India. So people used to read books. A book opens up your vision for the whole world. It's, it's a totally different experience than reading a tweet or reading even a Facebook post because it is, it's got a lot of bias writing inside it. A book, on the other hand, will give you more uh, perspectives. That's what we really need to develop. Before jumping into conclusion, jumping to conclusions on any topic, we need to be able to look at the pros and cons. Tell me today, if you read CNN, can you get the right side, right wing view? If you watch uh, Fox, will you get the left wing view? So where is the middle ground here? That's what P Gurus is trying to do. 
Next question, please. All right, that brings us to a close of today's session. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications. Namaskar.